Hey guys, it's Kevin again, this is my for Shameless, Season 5, Episode 10, Southside Rules. And I know that I've been kind of critical on Shameless lately, but honestly guys, I just haven't been enjoying it lately. And, which is why this episode was very refreshing, because I really liked this episode. In fact, I don't think there was anything I didn't like in this episode. Which is very big, because the past three episodes have had stuff that I've continually disliked, and... This episode had, like, nothing I disliked. I liked pretty much everything going on this episode. I thought all the plots were really interesting. And they actually made me care about Sammy in this episode. They did it. They made me care about Sammy. And I mean, could do it, but they did it. So, that's great. And, uh... Let's get into this episode because it was amazing. Probably the second best episode of the season. Definitely really enjoyed it. And let's get into it. So... We're going to start off with Ian first, because Ian and Mickey by far had the best stuff of the episode, and also was the main plot of the episode. So, of course, Mickey has now moved in as Ian's permanent caretaker, because, you know, Ian can't really take care of himself, and so I like seeing Mickey do that. But, of course, they're trying to have sex, and they can't get it some intimate, which, to Mickey, is totally understandable, given Ian's pill side effects. But, of course, Ian is doesn't really think anything's wrong with him. So, in Ian's point of view, he really thinks that there's nothing wrong here. He thinks that... Um, that, you know, they just don't have really the spark anymore, and I really do like seeing that, so. You really do feel bad for it, you know, just because of what he's going through. And also the fact that he is, you know, not understanding what's really going on. You really do feel bad for him, which I really do like seeing. So, of course, you know, Mickey's trying to be this nurse to him, knowing exactly which medication does what. And I love the scene where he's showing him what each, you know, like, what each thing represents. Like, this tastes like Gatorade. This tastes like this. Because, let's be honest, there are so many pills we don't want to take. Like, for me, for example, I have a cold right now, so I have to take, like, cough medicine. And it tastes like, it's it's it tastes like, basically, like, fruit punch. And I love when Mickey said that, because he's trying to help out Ian as best as he can. He really being, he's really being as sweet to him as he can. But Ian doesn't really seem to be appreciating it, but again, he really doesn't have much emotion, and you can't blame Ian for this happening. And it's all side effects of the pills. It's making him this very depressed person. And at the diner, this was honestly very scary. Ian zones out completely, he's collecting dishes, and he puts his entire hand on the boiling hot grill, and it's just showing how unstable he really is. He's scorching it. He has no reaction whatsoever. He doesn't think anything of it. He doesn't really care that it's there, and... <sighs> When he arrives home with this wrap around his hand, Sammy's there to greet him, and I actually like what they did with Sammy in this episode. I mean, I haven't really been enjoying Sammy, but of course, Sammy I actually really enjoyed here because she actually wants to help out Ian, and she told, you know, Debbie talked to her before and asked Sammy why she doesn't want to, why she even stays there if she doesn't care about Frank, and she says, you know what, fine, I'll leave, and that's what Sammy's planning on doing, she's planning on leaving. However, she really does want to help out Ian, which I do like seeing, because Ian does need someone to help, and I think Sammy's the right person to do that. So, Sammy's there to greet him, and she basically gives him first aid, he opens up about the military and the people who are looking for him after he went AWOL, because there are people from the military looking for him, and... I really enjoyed that, and after the snap, he has his visit from Frank and everything, who he hasn't seen in months, which is really big, honestly. He decides to storm out of the house, because he is now insisting that concerned Mickey either come with him or stay behind, because he's tired of having Mickey do everything for him, and he leads Mickey to this baseball field where they once had sex, and when Mickey shows more concern about Ian's hand and his beer medication combination, Ian punched him in the face, and... You can pretty much see why he doesn't really care that he's helping him. And you can see that Ian still doesn't think that anything's wrong with him. And it really is reminiscent of two weeks ago when we had that whole scene with him and Debbie. And he talked about how he didn't think anything was wrong with him. Because he says to Mickey, he's like, I don't need a fucking caretaker. I need the shit-talking, bitch-slapping piece of South of the Side trash I fell for. And... I do have to admit, Mickey's been quite different this season. Like, usually we see Mickey flipping off, but... This season, he's been much more sweet and much less um, of a douche, of a, you know, like a dick. So I can totally understand why Ian's saying that. But at the same time, it's all his medication. And they get into this huge fight. It was just, this was crazy. I thought someone was getting seriously hurt here. And it, it's crazy what's going on here. But of course, whenever they get into a fight, it always brings them back together, which I love. They shotgun beer and they laugh, and it's really the first time that Ian's felt anything, and he's really feeling happiness here. He's feeling happy, and you feel happy for Ian because he hasn't felt anything in, like, weeks. The last time, I think, he really, he hasn't felt anything, and 
it's great that now he's finally feeling something. He's feeling that feeling of happiness, which I was happy that that was happening to him, and I thought that was just a really great scene. And I love when they come back singing Love is a Battlefield. They arrive back at the house, and Ian's very happy, but he's trashed on just one more. Suddenly comes the realization that they've never been on a real day of proper clothing, which they haven't, so they decide to go change clothes and go on a date. But unfortunately, Sammy called the U.S. Army, and honestly, I think she did the right thing. I understand if someone could say, oh my gosh, it's just what Sammy did with Chucky. It is sort of revenge for what they did. I like what she says. She's like, it's a shame when someone you love gets taken away, isn't it? She says that, and... But honestly, I'm, I understand why Sammy did it. I mean, they're looking for him. They're mad at Ian. They're pissing him. Ian needs someone to knock some sense into him. Ian needs someone to help him. And Mickey, clearly it's not working. So if he doesn't listen to Mickey, he's going to listen to them. And I think Sammy honestly did the right thing. I understand if someone thinks that Sammy, you know, did something wrong here. But I personally think that Sammy did what she should have done. She personally did the right thing. And I think that was right what she did. So... I'm happy she did that, and I think definitely Sammy did the right thing there. She did made the right decision, and I'm happy she did that. So I really enjoyed that plot, bro. I thought that plot was really, really strong, and I definitely enjoyed what happened between Mickey and Ian in this episode. So let's get into Fiona, because Fiona had a lot of stuff in this episode. I pretty much thought the stuff with Gus was over, but in this episode we see that, no, it's not over, because she's still watching the plants in Gus's apartment, even though he's on tour and definitely not with not interested in her and she calls him and when she calls him like i don't know how this is gonna work because she plans to have skype sex with him and i'm just like seriously that's the best you can do skype sex like not just have a conversation with him but she calls him basically she dresses up for the occasion but he's not there and it's it's it doesn't it makes sense why he's not there and i thought at that point it was going to show okay he's moved on from her he doesn't really want anything to do with her i thought that's really what they were trying to show that that he pretty much moved on from her but that's not exactly what happened he is actually saying goodbye basically she calls Sean and you can understand why i mean Sean gave her that really awesome advice a couple episodes back and he really doesn't really want to talk to her because he's trying to say goodbye to his son and ex-wife who are moving to Pittsburgh. And for whatever reason, though, she wants to see Sean as he's sending his family off. And obviously, it's exactly at this time that Gus chooses to call. And of course, Fiona ignores him because she thinks that he doesn't want to talk to her. He thinks that he's calling to, like, break up with her. I can totally understand why she's upset about that. So, Gus is nowhere to be found at this point. He's pretty much MIA. So, she ends up basically, you know, she doesn't know where he is. So... Basically, she, because she's a Fiona, she decides that they go to this bar, not drinking, and Fiona's giving him the same kind of concern treatment that Ian resents and Mickey for. And I like what Sean says to her, that you make it your job when you focus on other people's problems, and it's a lot easier to ignore your own. It's really is true. I mean, think of all the people that Fiona has cared for. He brings up all these people, Jackie, Ian, Debbie, um, even him, and Fiona is such a selfless person. It really just shows how selfless she really is because she cares for these people so much she's such a selfless person and i really like that sean pointed that out to her because it is true she's always so selfless but unfortunately because she's so selfless it's eventually gonna break her and that's kind of what i'm worried about that this is eventually gonna break uh fiona which i really hope does not happen because i really do like fiona's character overall and i think i like where they're heading with her so i hope that that does not happen but honestly i kind of feel like by a conversation that he's hinting that this could break her eternally, and it's not going to involve her if that does happen. So, Fiona insists that she likes Sean, and he really gets overheated and by calling him because, you know, he doesn't really want her to like him because of everything that's going on with Gus, and his anger attracts the attention of this drunk pool player, and basically, um, he starts this other brawl, slams Sean into the bar, and basically... She's tending to his wounds. They realize that they're both chaos machines, and they can be each other's. And they end up kissing, but of course, Gus sees them, and wow, that's not going to end well. But I actually like what they did there, because, you know, at the time, we thought that Gus didn't really care about her, but we see that, yeah, he does still have feelings for her, and it's not going to end well between any of them. And I'm very worried to see what's going to happen there, but I like what they did overall. Do I want Fiona and Sean together? They're both very unstable, but I honestly feel like Sean is the right person for her. He's telling her he's telling her the truth, that she needs to start caring more about herself and less about other people. <sighs> However, she is their caretaker. She's been the Gallagher's caretaker. She's been the person that takes care of them. 
I mean, she really needs to do that. But I think that Sean, I do see his point there, that she needs to start caring more about herself and less about other people. So, Frank. Let's go to Frank and Bianca. I didn't give a shit about them last week. I really didn't. I didn't care what happened last week. I thought, just because last week's episode in general was boring, but I loved what they did with Frank and Bianca in this episode because I actually really do care about them now. In fact, I think they're honestly very cute together. I really do. And first of all, the fact that Frank is in love and he didn't know how to proceed with it I thought was really funny because this is Frank we're talking about. Frank is now feeling love, and that's not something that Frank usually feels. Frank, there are a lot of things he doesn't feel. Love is not one of them, and Bianca is immediately kicking him out because, you know, of course, the fact that there's this homeless man in her apartment, of course, she was drunk before, so she thought nothing of it, but now that she's sober, she's like, get the hell out of my apartment. It makes sense why, because he doesn't belong there. So, <sighs> despite Frank's plea that their chemistry is off the charts, she's his favorite dying person, which is kind of weird. Of course, there was that girl that, in season two, that he had sex with, and she died. I don't remember her name, but you know who I'm talking about. The girl that had, like, that disease and where she couldn't have sex. It was weird. He goes over to the alibi where he seeks advice from any woman who will listen, and V's there to raise an eyebrow when Frank swears that there's no scheme or scam behind him. Frank wonders why Bianca wouldn't want to be with him. It's perhaps the first time he actually questions himself and the flaws he's never been able to grasp, which I like seeing the Franks realizing that, you know what, he's not the best person. <coughs> and it really is some very good character development for Frank, because... <sighs> I'm tired of seeing Frank be the selfless dick all the time. I want to see Frank be a nice guy. I want to see Frank realize that, yeah, there are problems with him, and I like seeing this happen to Frank. And basically, V questions his good qualities when Frank hilariously lists as a lust for adventure and a bum bottomless libido. And finally, she gives in. She's like, this is for real? And she asks, make it like the world stops spinning when you look at her. And that's honestly really good advice. So, so what he should do is that he should make it look like, you know, when he's with her, the world stops spinning. And I think that's honestly really good advice, which she said to him. So he cleans himself as best as he can, but of course he can't do that because the house is waterless. So I thought that was really funny. And I have to say, this episode was very funny. And he goes back to Bianca's apartment, and there's Bianca's sister, who could not give two shits about Frank. Like, she could not care less about him. And she's like, you must be the homeless guy, and she refused to let him in. But Frank tries to get up the fire escape to Bianca, only to land in the dumpster, and he's shouting at her out to open the window. It honestly, is really cute. I found it to be really cute overall. Bianca, you know, Bianca actually does open the window, and she seems kind of distraught. She's not angry. <laughs> And I like what she says to me. She says, I can't offer you much, but what I can do is be your chauffeur on the limousine ride to the pearly gates. Now, I can understand why she doesn't really want anything to do with Frank. I mean, she's dying. She feels like she doesn't really want a relation because she doesn't want him to get attached. I can totally understand that. <laughs> but... I think that these two actually have really good chemistry, and I think that she honestly is a good thing for him because he's starting to question himself, and he's starting to realize that he does really like her, and I think that she really is great for him. I think if he wants to be with her, he should go for it, and basically, I really do love what he says to her and, you know, how he's telling her that he's going to give her this great life, and she's not going to regret what happens, and even when she dies, he's going to be there for her. I just thought it was really sweet overall, so... Bianca's sister storms out. A tearful Bianca's amazed that Frank is still there. The two women have been arguing over Bianca's reveals to see chemo treatment. And Bianca sits with Frank, exhausted, having to prove that she's fighting for her dignity, even if she's not fighting for a physical future. She gives Frank a skeptical look, and she's like, a why? it's kind of like a why are you doing this? And Frank doesn't have an answer, but he does promise to never ask her to do chemo or think healing thoughts or tell her how much he loves her. And... She insists they get tattoos, and honestly, just is really sweet, especially because Frank always has these really stupid plots. I love seeing Frank have this really serious plot and have this girl that he really does care about. It's very different, and I really love it. I'm tired of seeing Frank have these dumb plots, like things about him asking for money. I don't care about him asking for money anymore. I really don't. Um, Him making milk of the gods. No. Have stuff like this. This is what I love seeing from Frank, and I think Frank is starting to realize more about himself, which I really love seeing, and I love seeing, I think Frank's also gonna change, I really do, I think if he sticks with Bianca, he's gonna change as a person, he's gonna start to care more about him, her than he is about himself, which is awesome, because Frank has never done that, and I love that, <laughs> so I love where they're going, Frank's storyline, I think it's amazing, and I, Frank's storyline also is one of the highlights of the episode, it really was, so, Lip in this episode, I really like what they did with Lip as well, I thought Lip's uh, was also very interesting, because <coughs> I didn't like Lip's storyline last week, and this week I found it very interesting. Now, he's still struggling to wrap himself around this, um, not, basically, he's still trying to figure out what's going on with him and Amanda, 
Um, Amanda pretty much is there now to have sex with him, and he rejects her because he now wants to be with his professor, but I honestly can understand that. Now that his tuition is paid, the other concern on Liv's mind is the presence of Kev, whose babies are keeping the dorm awake, and whose lace synthetic weed has sent the dorm room into a convulsing vision quest of nightmarish landscapes. Um, they're totally, they're all freaking out about it. And Lip and Kev quickly bring all the spazzing kids in the Kev's room where they hope to wall it out, to wait it out before anyone has to go to the hospital. But that ends with this with a delirious Joaquin, the hacker from last week, jumps out the window, and with nowhere else to turn, he he turns himself into the cops. And Lip brings Joaquin, who's got this nasty broken leg, right to Helene's door and I actually like Helene's character here because neither she nor her husband are actually well medical doctors, though when Lip should have been smart enough to know, she calls an ambulance much to Lip's horror, but she presents him with a choice. Will he do the right thing and help Joaquin regardless of consequence, or will he revert to his outlaw ways out of sim some sim place misplaced loyalty to Kev? And he has to accept that Helene has made the choice by, for him by calling the paramedics. So, she really is actually helping him, which I really do like. Um, do I really want these two in a relationship? No, but I think she's a good friend to him. And I like this episode. They didn't make it like a, fr a lover thing. They made it as more of a friend thing, which I like seeing. Because I don't want to see these two get together. That, that's too weird. I just don't want it. And I feel bad for Amanda. I really do. I mean, Amanda and him had a really good relationship, but now she's just there for sex. She really is. And Lip goes to the hospital, and... He's by Joaquin's side. When the supposed sun god jumper wakes up, Joaquin briefly jokes with Lip that he told the cops about Kev, but reveals that he didn't say anything to the police, largely because they actually don't care about some stone Cody fell out of the window. And he says, where I come from, we don't, we got each other's backs. And Lip suddenly turns serious, as it's the wake-up call he needs to remind him who he really is or was. And the big question here is, is that the person he should still try to be? And I kind of feel like this is showing... That I also really like this scene with, that we saw with Kev because we see that Kev doesn't want to leave, but Lip insists that it's time he goes back home to be with his kids, and most importantly, V. And this whole theme of this episode seems to be just people trying to figure out who they are and who they are as people, and I really like seeing that overall because that really was a huge theme of this whole episode. I mean, think about it. Sammy's getting in touch with herself, Frank's getting in touch with herself, Fiona is, and now Lip is. Everyone's getting in touch with themselves, and I love it. I really do. I think it's great storyline, and th th these are the kind of stories that Shameless need to be telling. Not some dumb storyline about how Sammy needs to be there for Frank and all this bullshit like that. These are the kind of storylines Shameless needs to be telling. This is why I love this episode so much, and I think that, honestly, what he said to Kev is what Kev needs to do. He needs to get back to V, and the question is, does V really want to be with him now? I don't really know. We'll see what happens there, but... The last thing we have to talk about is Debbie, because Debbie had a huge thing this episode. What happened with Debbie and Derek, oh my god, I'm actually worried for them. Because Debbie Debbie and Derek, it's going pretty well for them so far. I like them as a couple, I think they're good together, and they're on the same page when it comes to sex. In fact, he wants to have sex with her. He tells her straight out, I want to have sex with you, and... They decide to have it at Debbie's house, because I love it, she's like, nobody cares about me. I thought that was really funny. So... They go to Derek's um, house, where Derek is throwing him this barbecue, and Debbie requests, and I like what Debbie did here, because Debbie doesn't think a lot, I've said this before, Debbie doesn't think, and here she actually thought, because she requests Fiona's help to, it's, in going to Planned Parenthood so she can get birth control and go on the pill, and Fiona initially discourages it, but Debbie reasons that she's been dating Derek longer than Fiona was dating Gus before they got married, which is true, she has been, and I like that. Debbie said that because Fiona's being a hypocrite by saying that, because really that is true. Fiona knew Gus for like, what, a day and then she married him? Debbie and Derek were very slow and they've been together for a while now, so Fiona makes the point and they get Debbie some birth control pills from the clinic and here's where things don't go so well. Because I thought Debbie was actually making a good decision here, but then this is Debbie we're talking about. Debbie doesn't exactly make the wisest decisions because... We realize that Debbie's going to do something really, really bad, because the doctors tell Debbie that the pills are not going to work for 48 hours, so she'll need to use alternate protection, and I'm like, there's no way she's going to do that. I, we know Debbie. We know that she's not going to do that. Think what she did with Maddie. There's no way she's going to do that, so I thought maybe Debbie would just turn down Derek, but this is Debbie we're talking about. She honestly, she wants sex, so... She goes to this barbecue with Derek's family. They're really sweet, and basically... 
Debbie has a conversation with Derek's sister-in-law, and she tells Debbie about how she had her child and was quickly accepted in Derek's family and an escape of her own nightmare clan. And Debbie is intrigued at the idea. I'm like, no, no, Debbie, please don't get pregnant. Don't get pregnant. And you can see this look on Debbie's face. Like, she wants to get pregnant now. And that night, when she and Derek start having sex, he's about to put on a condom, and she's like, no, we don't need that. I'm on the pill. But it's like, wait a second. Your doctor said 48 hours, and you're like, oh, shit, she's going to try to get pregnant now. So, clearly, Debbie's going to try to get pregnant now. And if the biggest thing here, the biggest red flag is that I just don't think they're ready for it. Because when she says that she loves him, he just says that's sweet. Which is a huge red flag there that they're just not ready for this. They're not. I don't think that they're ready for this. I think that they need to wait. I think Debbie needs to wait. I don't think that they should be together. I mean, I love the idea of Debbie and Derek Taylor. I've said it before. I think these two are great together. I just don't think they're ready for sex. I really don't. I think that, you know, her having a baby, no, she's not ready for that. And I understand that she got inspired by a conversation, but that does not mean you need to do it. Like, seriously, Debbie doesn't think. I've said this before. Debbie doesn't think, and she's not thinking now. So overall, guys, I have to say this was a pretty solid episode. The storylines having this episode are a lot more interesting than what has been initially been going on. The storylines that we've had all season have really been dragging out. And this episode had a lot more interesting storylines. You know, it was all about characters getting in touch with themselves and just figuring out who they are as people. And I love that. Th these are the kind of storylines we need to have for the rest of the season. We have two episodes left, and if they can keep doing these kind of episodes, this is gonna be this is going to be Shameless's big comeback because the second half of the season has been very, very lackluster, and now they're finally getting back on track, which I love, and this always happens to Shameless. They get lost, and then they get back on track, which is awesome, and all this happens in half of season four, and I think that this season, I think they're really going to start to get back on track with things, which hopefully next week is just as good as this week, but let's talk about some things that are going on. First of all, I really want to talk about Ian and Mickey. I think Sam made the right move by sending Ian to that to the army. I think the army's gonna give Ian, tell Ian what's really going on, to give it to him straight, tell him that, you know, he needs to get some help. And I think Ian needs to realize that yeah, he does need the help. And even though he doesn't think he needs it, he does need it. And he needs to understand that yeah, he does need that help. And as far as Fiona goes, um Fiona and Gus I think are done. I really think they're done now, but I honestly would like Fiona and Sean to go. I think Sean has given her really good advice. I think she needs to listen to his advice, and I think that those two together, I really like to see them go. I think he's good for her, and I think what he's telling her, yeah, it's true. She needs to start thinking about herself and less about other people. Even though it's good that she thinks about other people, she needs to think about herself, too, because, you know, she matters as well. It's not just, you know, all these other people that matter. She matters as well, and she needs to understand that, <coughs> which I really like seeing. Um... Lip, I like seeing what's going on with Lip. I like that Lip told Kev that he needs to go back to V because he does. I think Kev and V are going to get back together because I think, honestly, they've gone through the fight. They realize that they need to be together, and I think they're definitely getting back together. Does V really want it? I'm not sure because they have this whole phone conversation about how Kev wants her to come home, but V doesn't really seem like she wants it, nor does she seem like she cares, so I don't know what's going to happen there. We'll see. Frank and Bianca, I love those two together. I really do. I'm I'm going to say, right, this is going to be Frank's comeback season, okay? If Frank can stay this way throughout the rest of the season, I'm going to love Frank's character. And I really love what they're doing with Frank's character. I honestly love everyone in the show now. I'm back to loving all the characters because I really like what they did with Sammy and stuff. So I really do. I mean, Sammy, I usually hate. And... Sammy, I think, did the right thing. She really did. I mean, Ian needs help, and she gave him the help. She's giving him the help that he needs, and I like that she did that. Um, would I like seeing him Mickey go on a date? Yeah, but she needs help right now. He is not in a place where he can go on a date. He's not even stable. Okay, burning your hand on a grill I don't think is stable. It's not that simple. Um, to just, like, get, you don't just get stable. They need to understand that. That he needs to get that help, and I like that Sammy's giving him the help. Debbie and Derek, as I said, they're not ready. They are great together as a couple. They, I really do like them. They're not ready for a kid, and Debbie needs to understand that. She's going to get pregnant now, and they're not ready for a kid, and that's not going to well for anyone. And uh, 
I guess it's really all I have to say about this episode. Overall, guys, I loved this episode. I really did. Honestly, this was probably the best episode of the season. It really was. Every storyline was so interesting. Nothing felt superficial in this episode. Nothing felt like, oh, we just need to put that in there because we need this person to have a storyline. No, everything just felt natural, and I loved about this episode. And I really hope they keep putting out amazing episodes like this because these are the kind of episodes we need to have for Shameless. Really, we do. And... Even though, especially with Frank, Frank is these really stupid, hilarious, like, supposed to be funny storylines. They're never funny. And here he's getting this really, you know, really serious, very sweet storyline with this girl, Bianca, who really just doesn't want him to be there because she doesn't want him to go through heartbreak and trauma and things like that. But I really feel that she's going to change Frank as a person. And I can't wait to see him go through that transition because I really feel Frank needs that transition. I think he's really starting to go through that, and I love that. And no Carl in this episode either, which is great, because I don't like Carl. I don't care about Carl, I don't care about Chucky, and I'm happy they're not there. So it looks like next week, Lip's gonna go, I mean, not Lip, uh, Ian's gonna go to jail. We'll see what happens there. That's gonna be interesting to see. Let me know if you guys saw this episode overall. Overall, guys, by far, best episode of the season. Absolutely loved it. And I'll see you guys in my next video, which we're gonna review for the season of The Fosters, because the season finale tonight, and I will be reviewing the overall second half of the season. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.